there, it's Teacher Jocelyn. I have two more stories today, and these ones are stories that are kind of nice for littler kids. So I want to do some that are especially for littler kids, for those, for those of us in our community that are a little on the younger side. Bear's Shadow and Caps for Sale. So maybe you already know these books because they are also old stories. This one is called Caps for Sale, A Tale of a Peddler, Some Monkeys, and Their Monkey Business. Uh, told and illustrated by, oh, this one's tricky to pronounce for me, Esfir Slobodkina. Did I do it right? I don't know. But it's a great story. And you will love it too. It says, once there was a peddler who sold caps, but he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on the top of his head. First, he had his own checked cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. Woo! Look at all those caps. Super tall. He walked up and down the streets, holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. As he went along, he called, caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street and he walked down the street calling, caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, said he. And he walked out of town, slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for rest, thought he. And he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put up his hand to feel if they were straight. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, and then the red caps at the very top. They were all there, so he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. <sighs> when he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. But before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. He looked to the right of him. No caps. He looked to the left of him. No caps. He looked in back of him. No caps. He looked behind the tree. No caps. And then he looked up into the tree. And what do you think he saw? On every branch sat a monkey. On every monkey was a gray or a brown or a blue or a red cap. The peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, duh, duh, duh. This made the peddler angry. So he shook both his hands at them and he said, you monkeys, you. Give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their hands back at him and said, duh, duh, duh. Now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot and he said, you monkeys, you, you better give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, duh, duh, duh. By this time, the peddler was really very, very angry. He stamped both of his feet and he shouted, you monkeys, you, you must give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped both of their feet back at him and said, duh, duh, duh. Oh boy, I don't think they understand. At last he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap and threw it on the ground and he began to walk away. But then each monkey pulled off its cap. And all the gray caps, and all the brown caps, and all the blue caps, and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. 
So the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, and the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly, he walked back to town calling, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! The end. That's a fun one, isn't it? And I have this other one called Bear Shadow. This is by Frank Ash, and there are a lot of stories about this bear. I love it when there's a lot of stories about one character so you can get to know them over time. Oh, and this one's about shadows. I thought maybe you would be out there playing in shadows too, because that's one of the things that's available to us all the time, especially in this beautiful sunny weather. Here's a shadow of a tree, and the sun makes it go this way. And then when it's right over, you don't see a shadow. But when it goes to this side, you see it again. And at night, no shadow again. One day, Bear went down to the pond with his fishing pole and a big can of worms. While he was putting a worm on his hook, he looked down and saw a big fish. I'm going to catch that fish, thought Bear to himself. But when Bear stood up to throw his line in the water, his shadow scared the big fish away. Go away, shadow, cried Bear. But Bear's shadow would not go away. Well, of course, right? Okay, said Bear, if you won't go on your own, then I'll just have to get rid of you. And he put down his fishing pole and began to run. He ran around the pond. When he got to the other side, he kept on running. He ran through a field of flowers, jumped over the brook, and hid behind a tree. Good, thought Bear, now Shadow can't find me. Where's his shadow right now? But Bear was wrong. When he stepped out from behind the tree, the first thing he saw was Shadow. Nearby was a cliff. Bear walked over to the cliff and looked up. I'll climb so high, Shadow won't be able to follow me, thought Bear. Bear climbed higher and higher until at last he pulled himself up to the top. <sighs> Huffing and puffing, he smiled with pride. And then he looked down and saw Shadow. Now Bear was very annoyed, so he went home and got a hammer and some nails to nail his shadow to the ground. He hammered and hammered and hammered, but no matter how many nails he hammered, he couldn't nail his shadow down. It looks like that he hammered a whole shadow of Bear. If I can't nail him down, thought Bear, maybe I can bury him. So he got a shovel and dug a hole, and when the hole is deep and wide, he let his shadow fall in the hole. Then Bear filled in the dirt hole with dirt. When he finished, it was almost noon. The sun was as high in the sky and Shadow was nowhere to be seen. <sighs> At last, said Bear, no more Shadow. But now Bear was very tired. So he went inside and took a little nap. While he slept, time passed and the sun once again cast shadows everywhere. When Bear got up and opened his door, he saw a shadow on the floor. Not you again, exclaimed Bear, and he slammed the door, hoping to lock Shadow inside, but Shadow was too quick. Hmm, sighed Bear, how about this? If you let me catch a fish, I'll let you catch one too. Nod your head like this if it's a deal. When Bear nodded his head, Shadow nodded too. Of course. So Bear went back to the pond and once again threw his line in the water. By this time, the sun was in a different part of the sky, which made it easy for Shadow to keep his part of the deal. Well, it's not on the water anymore. It's over here on the land. And when Bear caught that big fish, Shadow caught one too. You know, I was thinking that was a book for little kids, but I think it's a book for grown-ups too. This one's, uh, good stories are good for kids and for grown-ups. Okay, that's all for today. See you later.